Hey there, everyone. This is MKJR, and this is a conversational, just general discussion about the Lexus TX. Now, the Lexus TX is based off the Grand Highlander. Just if you're not unaware of Grand Highlander, it is the Highlander, but nicer. <laughs> it's to compete more against the high end Palisades uh, pilots, uh, vehicles that are semi premium. Uh, maybe Buick's offering the um, Buick Enclave, right? This is meant to kind of push above the typical Highlander into something a bit more um, luxury, but not quite, you know, um, loading it up before you jump to the Lexus level. However, they are providing that Lexus jump up to uh, a mainstream brand, uh, mainstream luxury brand badge, right? That's kind of what this is. Um, they already have a three-row SUV. Well, the RX has has had it, um, but that's a midsize. Uh, the LX is the only thing kind of similar in size, but that's a truck-based chassis, ladder on frame. Uh, so, uh, comparison to more uh, mainstream cars already out in North America, uh, think of this vehicle as a Chevy Traverse versus a Chevy Tahoe slash Suburban. All right, so it's still a three-row, pretty much minivan, but not quite. Uh, versus a truck. So Alex is the truck. This is the uh, more practical family hauler. From the design of it, I think it's the probably the least offensive Lexus around in a while. Um, it has some general designs from the high, uh, Grand Highland that you can see. Most notable is the window line. You see this kink right here. That's the hardest thing to hide, as you can see right here. Same kink, same design. You can tell um, from certain angles what it's based off of. But generally, they have a lot less uh, aggressive design. This is a very angry, aggressive <clears throat> RAV4. That's what that is. This is uh, Lexus as old. It's just relaxed and chill and just, I I'm going to be here. I'm going to be dependable. I'm going to go 200,000 miles and I'm going to be comfortable and I'm not gonna look out of place. No one's gonna think lowly of you about it. Most, you know, most people won't even be impressed that you got this unless you go inside of it and go, "Oh, this is nice." And then once it's not new anymore, though, it's just a car, but a very valuable one. I think this will be uh, more practical than a, uh, well, more compelling than a Lexus RX. A lot of people that buy a Lexus RX, you know, want Toyota Lexus reliability they want the next one the more comfortable and a lot of people uh, at least where i'm at in houston and suburbs will buy a more practical vehicle than they need for that small percentage of time uh, that they need a more practical vehicle so they will be pushed onto this i think this is more conservative you'll get more elderly buyers bigger families people are all going to really enjoy this one and i think they should uh the grand highlander uh the toyota version of it comes a 2.4 liter or 2.5 liter uh, engines this one uh has similar 2.4 liter but also v6 offerings uh its horsepower range is always a little bit higher there uh the grand highlander goes as low as um 265 260 something yeah 265 the uh lexus tx goes as low as um 275 horsepower, I believe. Uh, they can go up to the 400 range with their hybrid V6 offerings. Uh, confirm, there's no confirmed price or MBG. The Grand Highlander is the only one with that information. Um, that one uh, starts, well, we can see right here. That one starts 43, max out right at 60. So you can expect the TX to start around here, you know, um, hybrid max limited, about that price. Um, and NTX is, for all intents and purposes, a more premium version. A rebadged vehicle uh, for domestic brands, like, let's say Lincoln, right? Um, that isn't always the most successful. Uh, I think Lexus is going to have a better time. The interior is a substantial upgrade, in my opinion. Um, Lexus has pretty good materials all around. I think they have some of the best leathers you can get, uh, at least for, uh, without upgrading them. Right. Uh, versus the Highlander, which, uh, this is, 
just a typical fine interior. I don't think most people are going to have anything wrong with this. But the Lexus overall is going to be more plush and uh, generally just nicer, right? Better audio systems, um, more sound ending, things of that matter. The interior is a bit of a general design um, taken from other Lexus products. The Lexus RX is a similar um, screen with the um, knobs, with the temperature, with the screen inside of it. I think it looks pretty good. Um, you can tell it's, you know, family has a little um, window screen right here. This is a charging port uh, for the third row passengers. And when people have gone in the Grand Highlander, uh, it's been good space. And this is going to be the same packaging, it looks like, right? Uh, overall, the uh, visibility of it versus the more angular styles, this has been more of a open design. Uh, there's a lot of glass in this. So that's why I'm also thinking there's going to be more people pushed to it because I think with the general design of it, um, it's going to be more usable. Uh, again, it's not exciting. It's not trying to be. Uh, I think the V6 hybrid offering will be sufficient. Um, but there is a lot of people in this segment. Grand Highlander, I've been bringing up because that's 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 that same car, right? But there's a lot of people uh, fighting for this. Um, so the Mazda CX-90, for example, they're, Mazda's trying to go a little bit more high-end. So think of, I guess, yeah, mid-luxury between mainstream and um, economy. I mean, some people will think Buick, Acura is you know, teetering there. And uh, I guess Mazda's trying to join that crowd of uh, semi-luxury and they're trying to push themselves up. Uh, this thing is starting more in the price range of a um, Grand Highlander, but it, go, it can go more premium than a Grand Highlander will. And I think it looks phenomenal. Uh, see the good mix of fabrics and leathers and woods. Mazda, if you ever uh, get the chance to get inside on any modern in their products, uh, any modern Mazda products after uh, being away from Ford, um, they have been very good, uh, at least build, making their interior qualities better. Um, they give it pretty premium. So this vehicle it tends to do that. Now, you aren't getting the Lexus reputation. You're not getting the same badge. However, if you look at in this interior versus the Lexus TX, you will... If I find the video picture, yeah, versus the Lexus TX, come on, where is it? There we go. Lexus TX is very conservative, uh, and general, right? It's not as poppy, not as wow. Uh, they have competition uh, from brands that are trying to be somewhat premium. Uh, Buick Enclave is a conservative style three row SUV that's a minivan, but not really. Um, I think this is a somewhat appropriate Grand Highlander slash Lexus TX competitor. However, this one has a uh, swoopy, um, but uh, generally unimpressive uh, interior and build quality. The biggest competition that this will have is gonna be Lincoln Aviator, this right here is a similar price range, and uh, at least from rumors, this is not confirmed, Lexus and Toyota uh, are a little notorious for waiting to do their pricing once the vehicles are actually near out uh, on lots. They'll wait months and months and even give people the products to review without the confirmed pricing and get that range, so it's hard to tell exactly where it's going to be. But the uh, Lincoln Aviator... It's a rear-wheel drive-based architecture, so it's independent of uh, other Ford products, and it has a generally impressive-looking design. Now, something like this, you're not getting the reliability, right? You're not getting that dependability of a Lexus. People can see Ford and Lincoln mixed. Audi, especially, uh, is a competitor that is going to be right in the price range so this is starting at 59 grand most people are speculating mid 50s for the lexus tx this is the three-row suv from a mainstream brand with probably a better reputation than uh lincoln depending who you're asking right uh they have a more general broad um design but 
they are getting similar horsepower, or actually a little higher horsepower on the low end for this vehicle. Uh, they aren't going to be as well equipped from the beginning. And of course, you're getting, giving up some sacrifices with there. But it's good to know that this is an option. Uh, but I think most people are, uh, are going to buy this on the more conservative side. I don't think someone with a Lexus TX wants something to show off. They want something reasonable. Uh, being three rows, you could compare this to the Honda Pilot, Honda, uh, Hyundai uh, Palisade, and the Kia Telluride. The Honda Palisade and Kia Telluride, uh, reason I'm not bringing them up too much, even though they have a very beautiful interior. Actually, let's see it. So the Honda Palisade interior looks really good uh, in the 50s range to get it like this. A lot of uh, good materials I've been inside them. They're real plush. They're real premium feeling. However, um, Honda, you know, um, you get what you pay for. And, you know, you get a very nice interior that competes, you know, um, to, you know, lower in luxury, um, in my opinion. What are you sacrificing? Usually that's the engine, security. Um, <laughs> the engines aren't, uh, don't have the greatest, uh, greatest reputation. Um, there's some recalls. Um, I have a friend that works uh, Honda, and um, I've heard some stories as well. Uh, they aren't. Uh, they are covered uh, to near hundred thousand mile, but I don't think give it the same peace of mind. It does give a more conservative, cheaper option. But I think the cross shoppers of this would be more of not thinking about the reliability. The reliability, if you're cross shopping it as true to life as a TX would be, would be another Japanese product. Now, Infinity is pretty obscure right now. Um, their offerings are pretty ignorable. <laughs> uh, they don't have as good as market share, uh, market penetration. Most people won't think about them. They are an option. But I think the biggest one's going to be Acura because they're around, and the people that are this demographic, young people buying them, or mostly older crowd, will be introduced into this as an option which is the Lexus MDX. The MDX is the three row as well. It's from a Japanese company. The pricing is going to be a little bit less. It can go pretty high, th though, with the Type S, right? Uh, the thing is, this is more of a... more of the young crowd that looks at this. If you're a young family, you may think the Lexus TX is a little bit too soft, a little too conservative, a little bit too boring. The uh, Acura MDX is kind of the other end of that right so if you're the the market that people will get at tx either old practical in my opinion i'm guessing or younger families want to have something kind of nice this uh, gives more excitement more sport feel um basically discount bmw kind of vibes a little bit here and there <laughs> you know it's 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 something right but um the other option would be the Infinity. So. Should have pulled it up before. Yeah. So Infinity's, um So this is the QX80. This is their um, truck-based one. Significantly cheaper starting price than Lexus LS. The QX60 will be their closest, com uh, closest competitor. This is based off of the um, Nissan Armada. I think the Armada is the um, truck one. Pathfinder. The Pathfinder. It's based off the Pathfinder. Uh, like the TX uh, and the Grand Highlander, this shares a lot of components and kind of general cues from the Nissan Pathfinder. Uh, the Infiniti QX60, though, this looks very impressive, very nice. Uh, some of the newest Nissans in the early 20s now uh, have been coming up with pretty... Impressive looking interiors. This is from a premium brand. It is from a Japanese brand. Its reputation for reliability is more mixed because the last generation uh, Pathfinders uh, had terrible CVTs. Uh, and I'm not knocking on CVT just because it's a CVT. I just meant reliability wise. Uh, a CVT can be good. These vehicles apparently have addressed that issue. I don't know enough people that have owned them or they're not old enough to have uh, had a good opportunity to show their true colors, but this could be a good option for the people that want something just nice and subdued. 
because you're messing with a lot of people. Um, well, no, you're, right. you're messing with a lot of options. This is a heavily competed segment. Uh, I think the um, Audi, the Infiniti, the um, Acura, pro- and the Mazda probably be closest. Lincoln is a good option, but I think it's a little bit different enough, and it's more style focused. I think it's more of a dare I say uh, discount Range Rover vibes. I think the Aviator looks really good. Uh, uh, <laughs> like it looks kind of kind of British. Um, when we go to the more premium offerings, there is another. The Chevy Traverse is very popular. Um, I don't have the highest opinions about Chevy Traverse. Um, some GM stuff, especially some Chevys. Uh, you know, non-truck ones, non-sports cars, I'm not biggest fan of. However, they did the same thing with the Traverse for the Cadillac XT6. Now, this is probably the uh, old side of the crowd of uh, the Lexus TX, what you're fighting against. Um, love you old people. Um, we all get old. It happens, right? Uh, but it's the more comfortable, conservative uh, way. I think this is even more conservative because um, you're getting a domestic brand, right? Um, but the general design of it and the packaging, you can just tell how bulbous uh, it is here, uh, how inefficient it is with spaces, and just the general layout. Uh, the materials on Calyx, modern Calyx, has been pretty good. Uh, their build quality has been fine. Um, their overall design, um, when, especially when it comes to pa- packaging and ergonomics, it's been lagging. Uh, when you... Like, if you compare the Mazda. Ah. <laughs> it looks a lot better, man. Uh, like, when I looked at the um, Calyx CT5, the um, sedan had a similar experience when I went in, at the auto show and then I go to the uh, Mazda 6 and or Honda Accord. And, uh, you know. There's a lot of good things about Cadillacs, especially with their real drive based architectures. The handling's really good. They've been getting better at some things, but there are some downsides. And that general design, I think you get something a lot more impressive and something with b- much better resale value. A Lexus TX, despite being conservative, being kind of safe, uh, just a dependable, old fashioned return to form Lexus with 30 something to BG on three row SUV. Uh, it's going to have phenomenal resale value, and you can keep these things forever. This can be a somewhat bland car, and I probably would just get the cheapest hybrid you can find on it with uh, safety options and leave it at that, and it's going to last um, as long as you let it, well, well, until the battery goes bad, right? Um, but yeah, no, the Lexus DX, it's, you know, uh, I think it'll be very popular. I think it will be very safe, dependable. I think it'll be pretty boring, though. Uh, the only thing interesting people say about this is the Lexus Texas. It's the Lexus TX, you know. But it's going to be a good car. Um, going to be a dependable car, unless they really screw it up. <laughs> and uh, they're not known to do that. Um, so, anyways, let me know your thoughts um, in the comments below if you have anything you want to add to the discussion. Again, this channel is a discussional casual um off the cuff kind of um discussion about cars nowadays um with some other content i don't know coming when it comes but yeah hope you have a good one hope you enjoyed the conversation and take care okay bye